Hey everyone, welcome to the Weekly Wrap. I am Kathleen Trigg and it is finally February. Happy Black History Month everyone, or is it African American History Month now? I'm confused. People assumed our president renamed an American tradition and there has been a confession in one of America's most tragic cases. I'll get you all caught up in just a minute. You are watching the Weekly Wrap. Hey, I'm a journalist. I understand it's impossible to always get the story right, but TMZ, really? Earlier this month, TMZ broke the news that Donald Trump renamed Black History Month to be African American History Month. TMZ cited a senior administration official stating that after meeting with the African American leaders, he believed the consensus was that the term black is outdated. Well, many people were asking, what exact African American leaders did he meet with? I cannot wait to help my people out. Happy Black History Month. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now that's funny. Turns out Trump might have never felt that way at all, though. The story was actually fake because even President Obama declared it African American History Month in a proclamation. So he never remain, renamed it. It's been that way. Got to give it to the Donald when he's right. Give us a question. Don't be rude. Can you no, give us a question? Give you a qu can I'm you, not going to give you a can question. You can you stay categorically? You are fake news. Sir, Go ahead. can you stay categorically that nobody... <laughs> no, Mr. Oh, Donald, it is still pretty funny that the original fake story was believed so easily to begin with. I mean, nothing is surprising in times like these. It got my staff talking, though, and many of them consider the term African-American outdated as well. Senior correspondent Shannon Lanier headed the other way, asking people like you how you would prefer to be identified. Happy Black History Month, Kathleen. As you know, New York City is one of the most diverse places on the planet. So what better place to come to ask people how they like to be identified? Um, I'm half white and half black myself, so my dad is black, my mom is Portuguese. You know, it really doesn't matter to me. I guess it depends on the context of the conversation. If I'm talking to somebody that I'm more casual with or a co-worker, I'll say black. If I'm talking to people that I really don't know, if it's more of a uh, situation where maybe I'm talking to a larger group of people, I'll say African American. Does it offend you when people say, are you mixed? It doesn't offend me, I think just because I've gotten used to it, I don't know, but it's not offensive, it's just, it's offensive when I reiterate the fact that I'm not mixed and they impl and insist that I am. What do you get usually? Usually I get Spanish. I like to be identified as Haitian American, but most people can't tell by just looking at me. Uh, yeah, of course I like Asian, and uh, also I like in America. When the cops pull you over, are you black or white? Uh, white. There you go, brother, all right. <laughs> Stay alive, brother, Stay alive. <laughs> I guess that proves you really can't judge a book by its cover. And in the famous words of the late, great Michael Jackson, it don't matter if you're black or white. Back to you, Kathleen. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree with you more, Shannon, and nice moves. Thanks. Now, I am mixed, but I identify as black, and I actually think it's pretty silly to try to use terms like that to be divisive. I mean, we're all just people, right? And now this. You guys, today is the beginning of Black History Month, and in honor of that, Donald Trump gave a speech at an event. There he is. Uh, the speech has been widely criticized, uh, but some people enjoyed it. Uh, here to talk about it, please welcome one of our writers, Amber Ruffin. During this month, we honor the tremendous history of African Americans throughout our country, throughout the world, if you really think about it, right? Think about it. And their story is one of unimaginable sacrifice, hard work, and faith in America. Now, who knows more about hard work than Donald Trump? <laughs> I've gotten a real glimpse during the campaign. I'd go around with Ben Carson to a lot of different places I wasn't so familiar with. Now, he's talking about where, like, black people live. <laughs> They're incredible people. And I want to thank Ben Carson also black. <laughs> I know it's hard to tell. Wow. 
All right, we're going to switch gears now and move on to some pretty sad news that makes me angry at the same time. Emmett Till, you all remember him, the 14-year-old black boy that was murdered in the 50s. He's been an example of a failed American justice system for decades. The young boy was murdered while he was on vacation after supposedly whistling at a white woman. Well, after a trial, Till's murderers were found not guilty, and then they give an interview for $3,000 confessing to the murder just months later, but after they could no longer be tried again. The photos of Till's funeral were powerful. His mom wanted the casket to be open so that the whole world could see the horrors done to her child and to be aware of the harm that happened. Well, there's been a great deal of skepticism surrounding the inciting incident that led to Till's murder, and now we've finally gotten an answer from the only person who knows the truth. Bryant, captured here by 60 Minutes in 2004, now admits it was all a lie. That's a big giant. That's a big step. That's a courageous woman. And it's not hard for you to say that about her after a well, lie. I never had any animosity away. We were taught not to hate. I told that was inbred in us not to hate called hate destroy the haters. Wow, I'm even more surprised by his cousin's ability to forgive. I mean, he was actually there when Till whistled at Carolyn. That's someone who has found true forgiveness in their heart. Now, this story is so important for several reasons. As the mother of two black sons in America, these kinds of revelations just reiterate the realities for black men in America. Their word and narratives matter. And as Oprah Winfrey said a few months ago, there's a new Emmett Till every week. When you look at the story of Emmett Till and how that motivated a whole nation to take action, and then you think about what's happening in our country today with black men unarmed being shot, it's like an, a, a new Emmett Till every week. So when that happened, it was like the country had never seen anything like that demonstrated. History repeating itself in the worst ways. And now this. We're proud now that we have a museum in the National Mall where people can learn about Reverend King, so many other things. Frederick Doug Douglass is an example of somebody who's done an amazing job and is being recognized more and more, I notice. Harriet Tubman, Rosa Parks, and millions more black Americans who made America what it is today. Big impact. Well, he does know that Frederick Douglass is no longer alive, right? Just checking. Now, if it wasn't for the original groundbreakers like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and Rosa Parks, we wouldn't be where we are today. Their contribution still resonates and influences people to continue to make history. Some of my very favorite present-day trailblazers include Oprah and Barack Obama. Both of them have not only been successful in their careers, but they make sure to encourage positive change in our community. Let's check out some of the other black history trailblazers that break barriers every single day. And the list can go on and on and on. Well, before we go, attention sneakerheads. We all have different ways of celebrating Black History Month. Nike's celebrating by offering special editions of their signature sneakers. The 2017 Black History Month collection includes shoes like LeBron's 14s. But don't run out the door just yet. They're up for grabs on February 16th when the collection hits shelves nationwide. And I don't care what my son says, I'm not getting them. Well, maybe I will, but it's all Black History Month. That's going to do it for us in our show this week. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Head to the comment section below to sound off and check out my website, Kathleen.com, to see what I'm up to the rest of the week. We'll see you next time.